Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm doing something a little bit different this time with this video. Usually, you'll see unboxing and review videos from me, but this time I wanted to do a behind the scenes video. So, to give you sort of glimpse of how I do things and how I create the content that I've been making, I uh, thought it might be interesting to see and also to give sort of an insight into what I use technology wise to capture the video and the multiple angles and also to do the audio. So for example, you can see a microphone that I'm using now is the one that I usually use for my voiceovers. This is a short SM7B. And then just to demonstrate some of the different things that I do when capturing footage, I thought it might be quite cool to do. And this is gonna be something of an experiment I'm gonna do with each unboxing video that I do, I'm going to try and do a behind the scenes video of it and talk about what I've done and what I'm trying to do while also giving some insight into the things that I'm reviewing. So for example, at the moment I'm working on the HyperX Pulsefire Haste, which is one in a long line of ultra light, lightweight gaming mice that I've been looking at recently. Uh, the list previously includes the Steel Series Aerox 3, the Glorious Model O, the Logitech Super Light. So be sure to check out those videos if you've not seen them already. There's a number of different ones. And you can see it here on my desk. But what I'm doing tonight is I'm going to add on some extra grip tape, which is included in the box. I haven't actually used yet. It comes with extra feet and grip tapes for the side and top. So I'm going to do, capture some footage of that installation process, which will probably go wrong because quite clumsy and awkward with those sorts of things and always manage to get it wrong. But anyway, what I wanted to show is the different ways to test and set up things and also just how I capture video. So another example is this is my main camera, which is a GH4 Panasonic. Lumix GH4. I say it's my main one. Actually, I've got a GH5 over there as well, but that's doing more interesting things. And then this is on a Manfrotto tripod. And that's uh, the main one that I capture audio with, which is why it's got a serious mic on top of it. And that is a Rode microphone. But if you look behind me, you'll see there's also another GH4 over here on a bit of a shady stand and I'll give a bit more of a footage on that but that's basically a very flimsy boom arm which I use for the top down shots of the desk so I'm actually talking to you while sitting on my main desk which is where my PC and things are and the massive Samsung monitor that I've reviewed previously if you've not seen that but then I have another desk behind me which I use for video and that was originally my gaming desk but then I wanted to use it to focus on video because they're having a nice big space to do the video on and allow me to have something set up permanently so a space to do video on permanently and also to have a nice background on and not have to tidy up every time I go in to do video so one of the things about doing video is I do all this in my spare time so I have to optimize the amount of time that I spend doing it which means making sure the sort of area is set up nicely so I don't have to spend half an hour or more trying to clear the desk and make space and tidy everything up nicely so it's perfect shape but also what I want to do which I'll show a bit later on hopefully if not in this video in future videos is to make the background a bit more varied to not have the same background all the time so one of the things you might have noticed is this cutting mat which I have which I use on occasion. I've also got a couple of other bits of wood, which are interesting um, backgrounds and various other things. And you'll probably see the glass head that I use for headset reviews and things that I show off in there. So somewhere to mount the headset on that isn't just my head, things like that. So I've bought a lot of different things over the last couple of years to make videos a bit more interesting. But generally speaking, I don't do videos like this where it's just a talking head video. I'm talking directly to the camera because my content is more sort of meant to be focused on the product itself. So one of the things that you'll notice, for example, is I also have quite a few lenses. So this is one of them. It's uh, This is a Lumix, it's a macro lens, a uh, 2.8 f-stop lens. It's a macro lens. It's one of the first lenses I bought because I wanted to get a lot of close-up shots and really good quality shots of the products because uh, I thought they were the most interesting shots. And then I've got uh, some other ones. So this standard more 
larger lens there that can capture a bit of a wider gamut of things and also the one i'm using at the moment on this camera is um sigma lens 1.6 f-stop which means it lets in a lot more light and so there's a lot of challenges with these camera lenses to get the matching up in terms of the color grading and things like that but that's a lot more technical uh points but another thing is here is this ultra wide angle lens which i use for capturing things on that camera um, because sometimes you've got a big product trying to get it in the shot is very difficult and the thing with a macro lens is you have to either be very close or very far away if you're trying to do unboxing videos and things so there's quite a few challenges like that which will probably be covered in these sorts of behind the scenes videos and I thought it might just be interesting insight to what I'm doing and then also having a chance to talk about the products so uh, featuring the products in each of them so the main feature of this one is going to be about this HyperX mouse which I have uh, mixed feelings about I actually like it a lot it doesn't have much in the way of RGB as you can see it's just the mouse wheel lit up uh, but it is very lightweight and it's quite a good size and shape and I had problems with it initially which I <laughs> I couldn't get used to it and then I changed the firmware, updated the firmware and it was working fine after that. But one of the other things that I've noticed is the software has a bit of a problem. I'm going to go into more detail on that in the actual unboxing. This is more about the behind the scenes stuff and I wanted to show some of the camera stuff. So in a second I'm going to switch into getting into this mouse on that desk and putting the grip tape on it but I also want to do some more interesting shots I'm going to try and do some green screen stuff I don't know how that's going to come out I haven't really done much of that but I want to try and make some really interesting green screen videos so I'm going to try and do that and see how that comes out and if it doesn't feature in the unboxing and review video then you'll know it went horribly but you'll see some of the behind the scenes of how I tried to capture it I've got a pop-up green screen which I'm going to try and use and just mess about with that. And also I'm going to show you the Edelkrone slider that I use for capturing some really nice sort of smooth panning shots. And you'll see that a little bit later on. So now you can see a bit more of the space over here and what's going on now I'm in my chair out of the way. I don't know how good the audio will be and also I'm at the wrong height, but one of the other things I wanted to talk about is uh, one thing that people keep commenting on is uh, I keep getting comments of, oh yeah, this guy's really shaky in his video, and this is the reason why, because for the most part, I'm down here, or at this height, kneeling on the floor, with a camera in front of me, and while looking at the screen to see what I'm capturing, I'm also reaching around, trying to grab hold of products, for example, a box, in front of the camera, in a position where I'm not knocking the camera constantly, so I'm generally like reaching around like this, and trying to unbox it, in an interesting way and people notice that their hands are shaking and generally it's because there's just this awkwardness and capturing footage of multiple devices usually ends up taking me two or more hours and so it can be uh, quite tiring to be on your knees at least for me anyway because I'm getting on and although I end up with some pretty good shots I get very low down in order to get them so it can be quite challenging but this is the main capture camera that I use for that. And then let's have a look at this other one. And that's how I get my shots where you see multiple angles of unboxings. So uh, I'll capture on both these cameras at the same time and then use those photos, uh, videos in the timeline to then edit it down to go between them. And then I'll show you the other camera. So here I am, still on the floor <laughs> and uh, with the other camera, so this is the main camera, I've actually got the wide angle lens on now, so if you notice a bit of the width of the thing, that's why. And you'll see some of my other gadgets and things that are used for video capture. I've got these really cheap lights, which I need to upgrade. I haven't had a chance to do yet, or the money to do it, but I've got plans for getting a big light upgrade in the future. And then I also have these very small ones, which are really cool and handy for getting. Uh, this one's got no power, I use those. And so that is really handy for lighting up products close by. They're fantastic little lights. And the main thing is this, which is a fantastic bit of kit. Now this is Edelkrone slider and the head. 
And what basically what this does is it pans side to side on the slider, but it's automated and it's all phone controlled. And it can also tilt and pan at the same time. And it does some really interesting shots. And so if you've ever seen some really smooth sort of shots from me where it goes side to side and pans around a product, then that's what this is from. And this is my GH5, which is my fanciest camera. Uh, but I actually keep it on here because it has the best autofocus and image stabilization. So this gives the smoothest possible shots. And it might be wasted to some point being on here because I don't use it for the handheld stuff or for some of the other work um, that is the main bit of my unboxing videos. But the really smooth and nicest shots I feel like come from this. And the reason I've got multiple cameras is so I just don't have to take them off all the time and disconnect them and reconnect them. So I can keep separate cameras, multiple angles, and do some interesting things. And this tiny little knife is going to appear in an unboxing video soon. I've actually used this in the past, but I left it in a drawer and forgot about it. And so that's been something to do. And the other things I'm going to try and do tonight, I've been behind on is the Corsair K70 TKL keyboard, a Samsung Q9U, which has only just shown up, which I've been interested in seeing. This is an XLR mic with USB as well, so that should be really cool. Uh, although I've seen some reviews which sort of suggest that it isn't, but I'll be interested to see how I feel about it. And then the Omen Vector, which is a wireless mouse. Now, I always set out with the idea of capturing multiple products in one night but it usually ends up with only end up with two uh, or maybe even one depending on how much footage I get so we'll see how this goes but this is a behind the scenes of what it's like being the prawn and now um, down here is the switch to turn on all these lights now at the moment these lights are not being controlled anyway this is Philips Hue lighting all of these are that little man that you've seen, the steampunk man that's over here, he's Philips Hue controlled. So is that light in the corner, so is all this light strip. We've moved house recently, my internet's absolutely shocking, so those aren't actually connected to the Wi-Fi in any way, so I can't control the colours. They used to make them different colours to make things interesting, but at the moment I'm not doing that. So they're just interesting lighting in the background. But one thing that I did do recently is I polished this desk, which you can really see from the lighting here. It looks fantastic, I think. I was really pleased with that. Probably needs another polish, because that was a few weeks ago. But it looks really nice. The other thing I have done recently as well, is I also bought some more disc plates. And I really like these posters. I've done videos on them previously. But basically they're magnets. They're held in place with magnets. So they're really easy to change. So, for example, if you want to do that, And then I can change up the look and feel of it with ease, just in a couple of seconds, which is nice. And you can adjust the position, so this one's slightly off. They're not cheap, but they're metal posters and they're held in place with magnets, which is really cool, I think. And they make for a nice, interesting background. Another recent addition is Caviera from Rainbow Six Siege, which I bought, because I really like her as a character, and I thought it'd be a fun background. So now I'm going to get into some footage. Now the next thing I'm going to do is try and make things a bit more varied because I don't want it to end up with it being just my desk all the time, the same, the same background. So we've actually got like little bits of wood like this, which have some really nice patterns on them. I really like the wood effect. Um, stands out nicely from the tech. So what I'm going to do is use these cameras to get a top-down shot of the mouse and try and crop it in so that you can't really see the rest of the desk so it gives the illusion of being somewhere new at least that's uh, so now I'm spoiling all my tricks but this is how it works so this is what that shot's gonna look like and you'll see hopefully see this in the video but basically you can see on the display here what it looks like and usually I try and capture about 10 seconds of footage for each shot, each angle, whether I'm doing a panning or just a stationary shot like this. But what you might notice is this thing is really wobbly. So I actually end up having to catch like 15, 20 seconds of this just so it calms down a bit and then use 
motion stabilization within the foot, uh, video software to fix this problem which is a hassle and a pain so I want to upgrade this arm at some point maybe do a ceiling mount or something like that but as it stands it does the job and I think it usually does okay and it looks kind of interesting and the good thing about it is I can adjust it into a variety of angles so you can sort of go top down and I might try and include some of this footage just so you can see and you could also take it to like a lot lower and from the side it's very adjustable and it's a really cheap arm that was purchased on Amazon my wife actually purchased it for me but and then we can get another pretty nice shot trying to keep that rest of the background out but if I were to show you oh you can just about see it so you can see just what that's going to look like and I think it'll look okay and with these videos generally I try and make a bit of motion in them to make them interesting and it's not necessarily possible with this because it would just wobble too much and the GH4 isn't that great at stabilizing anyway which is why I bought the GH5 so a lot of the movement from my hands would get picked up and it'd be really shaky and it'd be messy to tidy up in the software so it's better to just keep it stationary um, and the Manfrotto tripod is excellent for that this arm is not but it does the job to some degree and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to keep this roughly in this position because it's a good angle. Maybe crop it in a little bit more. And then I'm going to move this camera over and try and capture some footage of this. And that footage will then be used so we will see the end results of it hopefully. So that was relatively successful. I actually managed to get most of the stickers in the right place. Not perfect though. There is a bit of an annoyance, which you'll probably see in the main video where it's covering the holes. I could probably peel it off and put it back on again, but sometimes I like to leave my mistakes in there. I'm only human. Now I'm going to try and capture a bit of footage, which I didn't before with the Snyder, so you'll be able to see some of that in action as well, because that's really cool, I think. Well, this slider costs an absolute fortune, and it is... Uh, but it's really worth it. It really cost me quite a lot of money. But it controlled, it's controlled with two batteries on either side. And I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth, but I will link to videos that show you more about it. Essentially what it does is it controls the panning and tilting and also the sliding. And you require two batteries for that and then power cable on this side over here. So you get to see some of that in action in a second. First stage of this is trying to get this mouse set up in an interesting position. Now I tried to balance it previously. Here comes some more secrets of how I balance things. We've got this little glass stand which is actually for a ball. I basically put it behind there and then try and get the mouse to stand up. But usually it doesn't work. And so some blue tack is required. I want to get it to balance nicely, but the problem with this is you can see so you see the glass from behind there and you can see it from through the front because of the honeycomb, so it's not perfect. But I like this sort of angle, makes it interesting. And so I might just leave it there and hope that people don't notice. Now the slider itself is controlled for an app, which is really cool and particularly useful because you can program in different poses and positions. I'm using a macro lens on here at the moment, which means we get some nice shots. But the difficulty of this slider is you need to make sure the legs on the tripod are extended as far as possible, which actually is very difficult in a space that isn't that huge, to be honest. My office isn't massive. And so I've got to have the legs out in a position where it's not the camera doesn't tilt and fall over when you get to that extremity of it, which is can prove difficult, I'll be honest. And so often I find myself trying to work it into the into a good position. Now this is maybe too close, we'll see. I think that's kind of okay. Uh, so I need to turn that ISO up a bit, but if I pull you in, you should be able to see what that looks like. So 
So you can roughly see the shot I'm going to get now. And this is obviously static at the moment. But in a second I'll get a couple of positions and then we'll just skirt around it. So I usually try and get several of these shots. So I'm going to set that as pose one on here. You can see that's pose one now. And then I'm going to slide it over a bit. Tilt the camera in. What I'm basically trying to do is keep the mouse in the centre of the shot at all times. Actually, if I do this properly, you mostly won't see the cord either. And that'd be great. So now I've got five poses selected. And you can go into sequence and basically set the speed. And I like to make things really slow, so we'll do it like 25%. You can always speed it up in the software. And then, so we basically go back to the beginning. And it'll go back to the first pose. And then I can start recording and make sure it's keeping the mouse in focus the whole time, which occasionally requires touching the screen, but I try and avoid that generally because you don't want to be shaking it. So set it to record. And then we're off. not overly happy with how that went it was okay it's a really good slide and it, it looks good but my biggest problem is that cable's in the way so now i'm going to try and adjust that and reposition it and capture some the same footage but the good thing about this is because it's saved those five positions i can basically get it to do exactly the same motion again but i can move the mouse and you don't necessarily notice that it's gone through the same motions. So we can move the mouse, we can even move the tripod into a different position and hopefully still get some great footage, which you will see in the unboxing video. Pretty happy with that, that looks a lot nicer. Although I did have to touch the screen a few times, so it's really important to sort of keep where the focus is gonna be in the middle. It makes it a lot easier, it means a lot less interference with the camera and less video stabilization, which is always a good thing. Another thing you can do with this slider is put it straight on so we can zoom in and out, which just looks amazing. So I'm gonna try and set that on now. What you'll see is it's now sort of straight on. So what we can do is just go back and oops, delete all the previous poses. And then obviously I need to turn the camera around so it's facing the mouse like this. So that'll be position one, and then this is just simply going to be a case of, oops, slid the wrong way, sliding back. So you get this nice shot where it goes into the mouse or comes back out of it, and obviously I can use the clip in another direction. You can also capture from both ways.
just seen something happen then which was really annoying, I don't know if you noticed it, but this wasn't tight enough so it tilted a little bit and I don't know if it'll show up in the footage or not. So there you have it, some behind the scenes look at how I produce the content, uh, particularly on the Pulse Fire Haste, which I will be doing a video on shortly, if not publishing alongside this, and I'm going to do some other ones potentially like this. So if you're interested and you liked it and you want to know more about particular things or want to ask me any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, check out the links in the description, so I've got a Discord if you want to join that and ask me in there. Maybe some suggest some ideas and content you'd like to see and talk to me about that. And I might try and do more behind the scenes content like this specifically for YouTube members. So click that join button to see what the benefits of being a member are. And I want to give a shout out to all the awesome members that already include Raw, Meet Your Keyboard, Sir Spawns A Lot, Kraken Tortoise, Gaming Rainbow, Jeffrey Johnson and Curtis Williams and hopefully that list will improve in the future but I'd like to do more content like this for everybody as well anyway if anyone's interested in behind the scenes stuff and what I'm doing and just to see a sample of things I'm thinking about and things that I'm planning on doing so for example in a minute I'm going to start doing the Corsair K70 TKL and I might do a behind the scenes on that as well I've also been contemplating maybe doing a custom keyboard video so let me know in the comments if you're particularly interested in seeing a build on that although they are very expensive so that's going to have to be a consideration for the future and as I said there's lots of other things coming I've got two microphones um, two more mice, two more keyboards, a control unit which is going to be particularly cool and a number of other things as well. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video, I hope you found it interesting. Check out other videos in the description, particularly that HyperX video and let me know what you think of that mouse and let me know what you think of this style of video as well because we're interested to see. It's going to take a little bit while to put it together and it's probably a bit rougher and more rough around the edges than my usual videos because the cuts aren't going to be as good and the editing's probably not going to be as good and the mic quality is definitely not as good because I'm using the camera mic instead of my shaw but hopefully it's still an interesting view. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting, and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you, and have a great life.